<laughs> All right, it's against the odds time, and <laughs> we are playing Ultimate Super Friends in Modern. <laughs> so we, oh, we have all planeswalkers and lands, and <laughs> we are about to get beat down by Burn before we even play a real card. So, <laughs> I wanted to have at least one of every single Planeswalker. The trouble is, like, Domri, for instance, doesn't do all that much <laughs> without help. Uh, we're never going to reveal a creature. We will rarely have a creature to fight. And unless our other Planeswalkers can make tokens or something, our emblem is, isn't going to do much. <laughs> So I think we're really against the odds this week, <laughs> but you never know. It could work. Oh, well, that card's actually pretty irrelevant, <laughs> unless we draw our Tabal or something. So not too worried about Eidolon. Ooh, a Johnny. Swift Spear. To be fair, we were on the draw this game. Yep. Targus Command? Sure. <laughs> Down to six. Yeah, so we're just dead. <laughs> oh, the, I don't know how we ever beat Burn. Um, yeah. <laughs> As you probably saw there, we don't have a sideboard. There's not really enough Planeswalkers that so you can sideboard Planeswalkers. Alright, alright, alright. Hopefully we draw some lands. Since we only have one two mana planeswalker, I don't think we need to crack that fetch yet. We're also gonna have some interesting puzzles as far as fetching. So I think we're gonna need Flooded Strand for Hollowed Fountain. Will be our first land. We can get a Sacred Foundry as our next land. Now we can sack this watery grave, I guess. We're doing it. Now we get to play this Jace. We're down to 10, but if we can live long enough to like start playing a Johnny Vengeant, so we get to draw a card. Oh, <laughs> Chandra, no! I really needed you to be a land, Chandra. <laughs> it's, Burn has got to be about our worst matchup, though. It just doesn't care. Doesn't even go after Jace. Probably just going to kill us, honestly. A Boros Charm, us to one. Alright, there's the bolt. Alright, bad matchup, bad matchup. We'll get him next time. Ultimate Super Friends! <laughs> Match 2! Hopefully we're not up against Burn. And hopefully we draw some lands. Ooh. Alright. <laughs> they get to take the Domri. <laughs> oh, I can just imagine the look on our opponent's face <laughs> when they see this hand. Oh. I think Domri is our second worst Planeswalker. Uh, the worst, I think, is Tezzeret, which does literal nothing. Like, probably our the best thing we can do with Tezzeret is discard it to a Tabalt. And when the best thing you can do with a card is discard it to Tabalt, the card's not very good in the deck. Oh boy. Opponent's gonna get some card advantage going. Oh, oh no! Oh man. If we don't start drawing lands, Vrint Catacomb for our opponent gets in there with Bob. <laughs> hey, our deck is good at flanking Inquisition. <laughs> Since last time you looked, we've drawn a Karn, another seven drop. <laughs> oh, and a Goyf. Oh, please no, please land. Hey, it is a land. We're doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, another goif. Oh, man. This isn't going to work. Not happening. Not happening. Oh, look at this guy and his efficient threats. Oh, no! All right, we didn't draw land. All right, we're on the, we're on the play for match two, though. Again, no sideboard. Didn't have any good sideboard planeswalkers. Hopefully they took their Inquisitions out. Liliana's a good one. If they don't have discard and we can just go like land in the land. They left an Inquisition! 
<laughs> Why would you leave an Inquisition? Why? There's like five planeswalkers converted mana cost three or less in the entire game of Magic. Bob, man, it's like instant replay. Do we miss our land drop? We hit a land. All right, but this is the big test. Can we hit our? Can we hit our fourth land and actually resolve a planeswalker? Okay, Liliana. Lee's is not a fulminator mage. This means if we draw land, we get to play a planeswalker. Come on, land. Preferably not a vivid land. Come on, please. Yes, <laughs> planeswalker is going to resolve. Well, we'll take Blood Crypt. I don't know if it really matters. So, Soren Lord of Innistrad. Pump it up. First Planeswalker of the day. Nice dual deck, Soren Lord of Innistrad. Well, I guess we pitched this a Johnny. Oh, and a Thoughtseize. Well, the good news is... Oh my goodness, they had two Thoughtseizes! What is happening? And a Lightning Bolt, sure. What? Alright, well, we have a lot of 4-drop Planeswalkers, so the odds of us drawing one aren't that bad. We also have an 8-drop Planeswalker that we didn't really want to draw, because we're going to have to discard it to Liliana. So we have to discard our Ugin. Well, we need to draw our red Planeswalkers. Well, let's attack Liliana. Soren vs. the world. Make another vampire, play this land so we don't discard it. We do have red planeswalkers. They make themselves discard. Coligan's command to get back scavenge news. Alright. Bob is going to attack our Soren. Well, let's attack this Iliana. Make a vampire. Is Soren enough all by itself to get us through this? Come on, big Big mana cost. Wooded Foothills. We need a Red Planeswalker. That would be sweet. Plays the Ooze. <laughs> um, Nixilis isn't red. Yeah, let's just keep making vampires. Oh, they keep hitting lands! Uh-oh. Ultimate Liliana. So we either sacrifice all of our vampires, or we sacrifice everything but our vampires. Well, I guess we gotta sacrifice our vampires. But that means I get to kill our Soren. So we're gonna need a Chandra, like right now. Also, their Bob luck to get worse would be nice. Come on, Chandra. Hey, it's a Chandra! Alright. Chandra, kill the Bob, ping our opponent. <laughs> we got a Red Planeswalker. Uh, Koth would be awesome. Look at all these mountains. <laughs> And we can actually draw cards with Chandra? It is disappointing that all of our other color planeswalkers are dead to this blood moon. We need a, a big Chandra that can kill that ooze. Fencer. Well, we get to play Pluto Delta. That is not what we needed though. Blood Moon! What a jerk. Maybe we shouldn't have killed that Bob. Should have just hoped that it killed our opponent. They were running like 100% lands with it though. Uh, what did Foothills? Uh, wasn't really expecting Jun to play Blood Moon, in all honesty. I thought they usually scoop to Blood Moon, not play it. So we're basically dead next turn. Yep. Well, that was very disappointing. Alright, against the odds. <laughs> Ultimate Planeswalkers. Got a feeling we might get twinned. Bloodstained Mire, go. Untap Steam Vents. So maybe this is like a Delver deck? Jace, right. Ain't nothing compared to a Tabalt. Well, I guess we get Steam Vents here. Oh man, we could live the dream of discarding Tezzeret with Tabalt. Then our opponent can flip their Jace, Flashback Lightning Bolt, and kill Tabalt? Eh, not great. Uh, stomping ground, yes. Alright, can we do it? <laughs> can we discard this Tezzeret and preferably draw land? So to Balt, we can draw a card, discard one at random, deals damage equal to the number of cards in target player's hand to that player, and gain control of all creatures that gain haste. 
Oh. We discarded our Jace, the Planeswalker we could potentially play. Andrew a Soren, which isn't a land. Alright, so they're going to flip Jace. Probably kill our Tabal, which is a little disappointing. Our opponent's really tanking on whether they should bolt that Tabal. And they decide that <laughs> if... <laughs> that Tabal must be part of our plans if we are actually playing him. <laughs> Alright. Alright, alright, alright. Oh, and they have a angler or a tassiger. No lands for us. Gets in with Tassiger. Young Pyromancer. Serum Visions makes a token. Look at this wide array of planeswalkers. Land? Well, we draw land so we don't get to scoop. Actually we still get to scoop. It doesn't. We're dead. Alright. We get to be on the play here for game two. And we have lands and a Tabal. Alright. Oh, well, we gotta get Steam Vents. Ooh, Narset. Alright, untapped. Spin the Tabal wheel. Hopefully, we don't discard a land and draw a Planeswalker. That would be really bad. Uh, come on. Be nice. Oh, we draw and discard a Ral Zarek. <laughs> Okay. Oh, they're going to kill our Tabalt, aren't they? Alright, bold our Tabalt. Sure. <laughs> Opponent probes. Gets a look at our beautiful hand. <laughs> oh. Sulfur Falls. And Mr. Jace, of course. Well, I guess we'll just play a tapped overgrown tomb. Next turn... And the turns after that, we could start playing Planeswalkers. Is it good enough? I don't know. Are they just going to get remanded? Probably. But hey, we're going to give it a shot. Opponent pitched a Thought Scour. Well, I'm expecting we're about to get a Planeswalker countered. Uh, we'll get this Hollowed Fountain. And does it resolve? Survey says, oh, negate. All right. Well, at least it wasn't a remand. Jace will flip. Oh, Gitaxian Probe, that probably means our opponent, our opponent's really, uh, taking a long, hard look at our hand. They have a Tassiger? There's the Tassiger. Um, well, I guess we crack this. If our opponent just has a million counters, we're, we're kind of in trouble. Get a Wooded Foothills. <laughs> play a Chandra Nalar. First time in my life I've been really happy to play this card. If it resolves, we get to kill the Tassiger with the negative X ability. Ooh, all right. Chandra does X damage to Tassiger, and X will be five. Oh, Thaw Scour. Mills an Angler and an Angler. Okay, good. And Snapcaster to pressure our Chandra, I guess. Pumps up the Jace. Young Pyromancer. Kills our Chandra. Chandras are pretty good against their deck. Well, that's one that we can't cast, so I think we're going for an Elspeth here. See if our Elspeth will resolve. It does. Well, that lets us make blockers for the time being. Opponent's only got two cards in hand. We still haven't got more than one. Oh, really? One of your two cards was a bolt? Just goes for our face. Instead, they are going to pump up the Jace. Let's see if they go after us or after Elspeth. Just sending them all at us. Well, we're going to block. Down to five. There's a land. All right, make a token. Hopefully they didn't just peel a counter, or I think we lose. Cast a Gideon. Yes, all right. Make the creatures attack Gideon. We're still weak to burn spells at the moment, though. But we have the creatures covered for the time being. Vivid Creek. Snapcaster Mage. Gonna flash back the bolt. Well, if they draw another burn spell, then we're dead. Like, that's what it comes down to. Lightning Bolt makes another young Pyromancer token. Hits us to two. No bolts. Come on. We do have two on the battlefield at once, though. That's something. Gonna flash back the Thought Scour, see if they can draw into something relevant. Makes another young Pyromancer token. 
Did they draw a burn spell? Oh, another young pyromancer. Well, it's not a burn spell. Oh, they they left in terminates for. <laughs> oh, why would you leave in terminates? I guess maybe they didn't know what was going on. Well, because of that, we actually lose our Gideon, and then we are basically dead. Fencer doesn't help, and that does it. <laughs> All right, against the odds, ultimate super friends in modern. We'll see how this one goes. If this one doesn't go well, we might switch things up a little and play a slightly less all-in version that maybe includes some signets. Two bounce lands revealed off of those ancient stirrings. So if, if this goes poorly, I think I'm going to try a signet version of the Planeswalker deck or some sort of two mana mana rock. So we have something to do. If we can go like land into land, two mana accelerant into Planeswalker, I think that makes the game a whole lot different than when we are just um, not doing anything for the first three or four turns of the game. Looks like our opponent has the slow draw, but that is probably still going to be fast enough. No land. Alright, pass the turn. Like a lot of games we haven't even resolved a Planeswalker, period. And there's a Titan. Well, I think that's game over. I mean, we can't really beat a Titan, so might as well concede. All right. All right, let's see if we can somehow get lucky. All right, we get to be on the play, which is good. Domery Raid doesn't do anything. Breeding Pool, go. Gemstone Mine for our opponent. Oh, and the Amulet. And we drew a land, but it only lets us cast Domery Raid, which is... Second worst Planeswalker in our entire... Oh my lord. Double amulet? Holy crap. So we might just die here. Azusa. So our opponent has basically unlimited mana. We'll just F6. Watch this happen. Oh, so so we're not dead. Instead it's just a turn two hive mind. <laughs> sure. So that means if they never draw Pact or a Titan that we could win eventually... Dami Raid, let's pump this baby up. Ugin. Alright. Uh, not a creature, predictably. So I'm expecting to die, yeah, right now. And that does it. Alright, we're going to try version 2 in just a minute. This is going to be the version 2 of our Super Friends deck. Uh, slightly less ultimate Super Friends. Basically, what we did, we cut about seven Planeswalkers, mostly really bad Planeswalkers that don't do anything without assistance. Like, Tezzeret really needs artifacts, Domery Raid really needs creatures. So, a few random Planeswalkers got cut, but we have kept most of them. Then we cut three lands, so we went from 26 lands down to 23 lands. Those were vivid lands that felt pretty bad. Uh, and then in their place, we added in one of each Signet. So the idea is we can play something on turn two, and then we can go from Signet into our four mana Planeswalkers, and that's going to, I think, make our deck much more playable. The other change is I broke down and added a sideboard. These are all cards that seem to work pretty well with Planeswalkers. Thoughtseize, Negate, Supreme Verdict, any Wrath really works excellent with Planeswalkers. And finally, Path to Exile. So those are the changes. All right, against the odds, Planeswalkers, Ultimate Super Friends, version two. Okay, all right. We got a Signet. Our opponent's mulliganing. Maybe this is the time. All right, lead on fetch land. Pass the turn. Oh, dear. Basic Mountain is not what we want to see. Yeah, let's get Sacred Foundry here. I think we just play Bloodstain Mire and pass and not take the damage. If we had a four converted mana cost Planeswalker, we would shock ourselves to play the Signet, but since we don't... Oh, Goblins? Hmm. Uh, we'll get Steam Vents here. Vraska. Vraska could be good in the future. Orsov Signet, Watery Grave, tapped. We might be doing it. This might be the time we get to start playing Planeswalkers next turn. Ooh, Rabble Master? So what we're probably going to have to do is kill that Rabble Master with Vraska, but we take a bunch of damage, four damage. All right, we got to play Untapped Temple Garden, down to 12, but we get to play Vraska and kill Rabble Master. We're not out of the woods yet, but we are, we are doing okay. 
We could use a token generating planeswalker. That would be beneficial. Foundry Street Denizen. Oh lord, and a bushwhacker. Well, now we're basically dead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, we're not mostly dead, we're literally dead. Ugh. Alright, are we to the point of actually sideboarding and bringing in these rats and stuff? Is that where we're at? How many matches do we go before we start actually oh, sideboarding? Is this the one? I mean, we're removing Planeswalkers, which makes the deck less thematic and flavorful, but it would improve our chances of winning. I don't think we can beat goblins without them. Alright, let's cheat. So we're going to bring in four Supreme Verdicts, removing Koth, Narset, Kiora, and Venser, and then bring in four Paths, removing Nicole Bolas, Nissa, hmm, I guess poor old Tibalt, and Sarkin. We still have 23 Planeswalkers, which is still a pretty respectable number. This hand's so excellent, but we don't have the land, so we got a mulligan. Okay, we'll keep it. We're not keeping Blood Crypt, though. Flooded Strand, pass the turn. Supreme Verdict should be helpful. Alright, let's crack this, get a Godless Shrine. Yeah, we'll play Wooded Foothill, pass the turn. Not a great hand. Another Foundry Street Denizen. Ooh, but nothing? Alright, Wooded Foothills. Yeah, I think Blood Crypt. Wooded Foothills, pass the turn. Our opponent kept a one lander, plays a bushwhacker, which is pretty good. Alright, let's sack this Temple Garden. Then we get to play Hollowed Fountain, untapped, Supreme Verdict. So the board is temporarily clear thanks to one of our sideboard Supreme Verdicts. We are at nine, which isn't great. Another bushwhacker, Ashiok. Well, I think plan A is Liliana and just kill the bushwhacker play this watery grave pass the turn well we can play almost any planeswalker we draw and we still have a ton of them when our opponent has to pass we might be getting there since our opponent kept a one lander oh they're gonna bolt to kill liliana okay Ooh, soren is a good draw that has gives uh makes lifelink tokens soren make a vampire breeding pool tapped pass the turn I'm feeling good about it. I think we're finally going to do it. <laughs> Pile driver. Let's see if we can draw another sweet planeswalker. Well, let's make another vampire. Then let's play this Ashiok. Exile the top three cards of our opponent's library. We hit a Foundry Street Denizen and two lands. Pass the turn. Plan on chump blocking. Foil planeswalkers make foil tokens. So that's sweet. Ether Vial. No attacks. Ooh, a Johnny Vengeant? A Johnny Vengeant. So now we get to shoot down the Goblin. Then I think we're just going to emblem up this Soren so we can gain some more life. Go back up to 16 from our tokens. Exile the top three cards to a Goblin Warchief, Goblin Bushwhacker, and a Goblin Grenade. All the way back up to 16. Three Planeswalkers on the battlefield. Tamyo. Alright, so we can tap down our opponent's land with a Johnny. Exile the top three with Ashiok. Make a vampire token with Soren. <laughs> Tap the other land with Tamyo for the double landlock. And then I think we just pass the turn here. And they drew another land. Probably exactly what they would like. Oh, Johnny Mentor of Heroes! It just keeps getting better. <laughs> this deck is pretty cool when it starts working right. Johnny Mentor of Heroes. Uh, plain oh. S no, <laughs> we already have an Johnny. That's all right. Um, we get to pump up Ashiok, exile the top three. Then we will make a vampire with Soren. We're going to pump up Johnny. Find some more Planeswalkers. What do we get? Veraska or Gideon? I think Gideon is better. And now we'll attack with a couple. And then Tamio can tap down, I guess, Ether Vial. They're going to vial something in in response. Goblin, uh, War Driver. It only, it only took us a million planeswalkers. Chieftain. 
All right, they're going to hit for a bunch of damage. They can probably kill some of our Planeswalkers, even. See how they attack. Oh, they're not even going to attack with Chieftain. At Ashiok, at Ashiok, at Ashiok. All right, so we'll just uh, trade with one of these tokens here. Ashiok goes down to five. All right, let's pump up a Johnny. See what Planeswalker we might hit. Jace. Okay. Play Vivid Grove, tap. So we have Ugin next turn. We can, hmm, I guess we just tap down this war driver and then we can make a vampire we can exile the top three with ashiok and then i think we'll just play this gideon play the gideon <laughs> the board can't handle all of our planeswalkers make our opponent attack the gideon and pass the turn so we have one two three four five planeswalkers on the board Liliana died, we legend ruled in a Johnny, so we've played seven so far this game. And we have two more in hand. Vile time. Rabble, rabble, rabble. Remember, they have to attack our Gideon. They can't just go after our face and a pile driver. Yes, you have to attack our Gideon. That is what Gideon's ability says. And Rabble Master has haste, so he must attack as well. Well, we are gonna lose stuff, so I think we just block and then let's uh, double block the Rabble Master instead. Oh, we're gonna get to draw with Tamiyo, draw four. That's pretty sweet. Let's uh, draw four with Tamiyo. <laughs> Two Signets and a Jace. Well, let's pump up our Ajani. We whiff. Oh, we can ultimate Soren. That's pretty sweet. Let's ultimate Soren to steal our opponent's creatures. And then we can play Signet, and then we can use Ugin to kill that last token. Shoot down the last token, and we used everyone, right? Oh, we can still use Ashiok. Ooh, wait, do we have a... Yeah, we could! <laughs> uh, I think we could put in... Do we have a Chieftain? Yeah, we can put in a Chieftain. We'd give everything haste, and then we could attack for one, two, three, four, five... One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. Basically, we Ashiok put in the Chieftain and win. But our opponent conceded. So we did it. We actually, we won a game. We won a game. Who would have thought? <laughs> Planeswalkers everywhere. All right. See if we can win the match. That would be the ultimate coup. All right, no Signets. A couple Planeswalkers and a path. Guess that's uh, what, about what we expect. Oh, there's a Signet. All right, Windswept Teeth, pass the turn. Mog War Marshal. Question is, does this mean we need to shock ourselves and kill Foundry Street Denizen? I guess it might. We can get a Hollowed Fountain and Path Foundry Street. Alright. Play Rakdos Signet. We're down to 15, which is scary if they have any haste creatures or lords. Ugh, that's a pretty good sign that they have a hasty lord. They let that die. Yep, Chieftain. Well, that's six. That's a lot of damage. Maybe we shouldn't have pathed. Well, this isn't ideal, but shock ourselves, play Jace, and then we can tick up Jace, and it gives all our opponents attacking creatures negative one, negative zero. But if they have a Goblin Grenade, we're still dead. Uh, War Driver, does that kill us? Oh, well, that definitely kills us. Uh, well, we won a game. We won a game. That's what counts. All right, one more try. Against odds, ultimate planeswalkers. We we managed to win a game last match. We'll give it one more shot. See if we can actually win a match. Basic swamp and Inquisition. <laughs> Caesar Cop and our Nicole Bolas. We get to play a fetch land. Pass the turn. Godless Shrine. All right, let's search out a land. I think we want Steam Vents here. Let's just cast Tamiyo and Koth. Gideon. Another fetch land. Pass the turn. Lingering Souls. All right. Get a another blue land. Blue green. There's a Signet. Well, that's not bad. Golgari Signet. So I think we get to start playing Planeswalkers next turn. But our opponent's going to have a bunch of Lingering Souls tokens. So we take two down to 16. Serum Visions. Tapsy Chrome Coast. Flashes back Lingering Souls. All right. 
So we sack one swept heath, get a sacred foundry. Down to 12, but good news is we get to start playing Planeswalkers. Gideon Jura. So we get to pump up Gideon. Makes all of those tokens attack Gideon next turn instead of attacking us. Another Serum Vision. Gotta attack Gideon. Gotta attack Gideon. Plus two on Gideon. During a target oppo during target opponent's next turn, creatures that player controls attack Gideon if able. And those spirits are able. So it knocks our Gideon down to four. Loyalty. Another lingering souls. They just keep coming. Play Rakdos Signet. Play Overgrown Tomb untapped. Go down to ten. Play Tamio. Then we can use Tamio to tap down one of the spirits. That means we can make everything attack Gideon again, but Gideon won't die, so we get to keep it alive another turn. And then next turn, if all goes according to plan, we get to draw six off Tamio. And if we hit an Ugin, we will have enough mana to cast it. Thought Scour. So Stubborn Denial can counter Planeswalkers. Good to be aware of. So here comes the spirits. We might be winning. <laughs> oh, look at this board. Oh, an Ugin would be so sweet. Or a planeswalker that can gain us life. You gotta attack with everything. What part of Gideon's plus one is so confusing to people? Not just this not just our opponent, but so many people like don't for some reason realize they have to attack with everything at Gideon. Like it's it's pretty basic stuff. Nope. <laughs> nope, you can't leave one back. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> Opponent tried to leave <laughs> tried to leave two spirit tokens back. And it wouldn't let them, obviously, because everything has to attack Gideon. Then they figured, huh, maybe the problem is I can I maybe Gideon says I can attack must attack with everything except one. Oh, now he tries one one spirit. Nope, it doesn't say a creature your opponent controls must attack Gideon. Creatures, plural, all creatures, must attack Gideon if able. So everything you got, the tapped spirit gets excused because it's tapped. Every single spirit has to attack Gideon. There's no, no other way around it. There we go. Got there. <laughs> I appreciate the effort. They tried like every combination, like leave one back, leave two back, attack with just one, every possibility for finally giving in and realizing it. More spirits. Well, we get to draw a ton of cards. Exactly six. Oh, that's interesting. So what do we do with all these cards now? Play... Path, untap a mountain, Ashiok, Ashiok draws out the counter, okay, pump up Gideon, then play Vivid Grove, pass the turn. So our opponent has to again send everything at another Thought Scour, Mills, two lands. They have to again send everything at Gideon, which means we again get to draw an insane amount of cards with Tamio. Uh, Jace, Architect of Thought, would be another sweet one to get on the battlefield against all these spirit tokens. Is our opponent trying to get spicy? Everything! Still everything! Gideon, Gideon's plus two has not changed since last turn. It is still the same. We're not playing Hearthstone. Alright, they figure it out. Send everything at Gideon. Gideon down. Angler. Grimag Angler. Well, let's, uh, draw eight. Anything good? Not especially. Not especially. So what's our plan now? A Johnny. Then we get to untap this mountain. Play a play a fetch land and play Kiora. Hopefully this doesn't get countered, or I think we're just dead. Oh, remand. So we can. Shoot a token, but we take 5, 13. Yeah, that does it. All right. Our opponent countered their way through. All right. 
we're to the cheating point, so we are switching things up a bit. Nicole Bolas out. Nissa out, Venser out, Verasca out, Xenagos out, Urset out, Koth out, Tabal out, and good enough. Alright, game two. Alright, we got a three drop, into a four drop, into a five drop. That's the about as good as it gets with the Planeswalker curve. Serum Visions. Chandra. Alright, Pluto Delta, pass the turn. Chandra is not bad in a world of Lingering Souls tokens. A pretty good Planeswalker to have access to. Opponent's gonna pass. Well, let's crack Pluto Delta, get a Steam Vents, I guess. Crack Windswept Heath. We need something with white in it. White and blue or black? White and black, I think. Untapped. Play Ashiok. Planeswalker numero uno. Mana Leak, survey says. All right, first one gets countered. But there are several more where that came from. Man, Lingering Souls would be so sweet. We could just start picking things off with Chandra. I got a feeling we might get another Planeswalker countered this turn. Play a Soren, Lord of Innistrad. Remand. All right, not a hard counter, but... A counter. Hallowed Fountain. Untap. This must be a Thought Scour. Yep. Well, our opponent did draw a lot of counters. Hallowed Moonlight. Uh, okay. Serum Vision. Bottom and top. Dark Slick Shores. Tapped. Grimag Angler. Man, we gotta really hope our opponent doesn't have a Stubborn Denial. If they have a Stubborn Denial, I am going to cry. Literally cry. Alright, we will go with Hollowed Fountain, Untapped, Obnixilis, Reignited. Come on, please, please for my sake. Ooh, it resolved, and we get to kill the Gurmag Angler. <laughs> oh, thank you. Man, getting a five mana Planeswalker hit by Stubborn Denial is about the most depressing thing I can think of. Other than getting it hit by Force Spike, which is kind of worse or or the white one. Oh, that that card is the ultimate blowout card the white force spike oh i can't think manatize because <laughs> no one ever expects a force spike out of a white deck so you cannot be playing blue at all force spike someone and get the most insane blowouts follows it up by lingering souls well that does mean we might have to shock ourselves all right, let's draw a card with Obnixilis. Lose a life, unfortunately. So, Wooded Foothills. We're going to drop all the way down to eight here. A little risky. Get the Sacred Foundry. Then we get to Chandra Pyromancer. I think this will pressure our opponent into playing more things. And then we can maybe Supreme Verdict next turn. So, shoot down a token. Lingering Souls. Actually, that's kind of expected. Maybe flashback lingering souls. Yep, yep, yep. Very good. Hits us. Ignores the planeswalkers. Ooh, thought seize? Can we thought seize? I think so. Thought seize our opponent. Thought scour and two lands. Alright, take thought scour. Then we can white, white, blue, blue, supreme verdict. Get rid of all those tokens. They still have one Lingering Souls in the graveyard. Draw a card with Obnixilis. Ooh, a Nate Gate that we can't cast. Ping our opponent. Play a Tap Stomping Ground. Pass the turn. Down to four life, but we're not in bad shape. Alright, if you say so. So we will, this time, how does Chandra's ultimate work? Exhale top ten cards of your library. Choose an instant or sorcery. Exile this way and copy it three times. Yeah. Uh, we're not interested in that. So let's exile with Chandra. Jace. Well, we will play Jace. Actually, no, not yet. We should first play Signet. Play this Signet. Play Jace. Take down Jace. Thought sees Supreme Verdict and Flooded Strand. Yeah, we'll take Supreme Verdict. Put the other two on the bottom. Draw down to three with Obnixilis. Play Watery Grave Tapped and pass the turn. We have a lot of card advantage now. And a negate. Our one single negate out of the sideboard. <laughs> Making me feel a little safer. Well, there's Flashback Lingering Souls. 
Ooh, Tassiger. All right, Tassiger. I guess we're going to have to Supreme Verdict then. Ooh, Ugin. All right, let's Supreme Verdict. Clears everything away. Opponent's probably going to activate Tassiger and gets back a Dispel. Ping with Chandra, I think. Draw with Obnixilis. Down to three. Pump up Jace. Azuria Signet. Play... Soren, Lord of Innistrad, make a lifelink vampire, blood crip, tapped, pass the turn. Alright, <laughs> our motley crew of planeswalkers is sort of doing it. And our opponent's down to five minutes, so they, I think they had to scoop because of time. But that's, that's a pretty impressive board state, I will say. With the Ugin in hand. <laughs> Alright, we'll try one more time, see if we can actually win this match. Alright, one final shot at glory for ultimate super friends and we start on a mulligan oh it'd be so sweet if we could win a match but if not seven matches <laughs> that's that's as much as i can do polluted delta get a white blue source i think tapped oh that's not a land untap blood crypt into gruel signet oh lord our odds of winning just <laughs> dropped significantly thanks to Spell Snare. And then Lingering Souls. Oh. Well, we're going to need to string together some lands. Yeah, that's Polluted Delta. That is a land. Oh, if we had that Signet, we'd be in business. We could have played a Johnny Vengeant. We're just got to hope and pray we get a land and our opponent doesn't have. Well. A counter doesn't matter as much because we can Supreme Verdict through it. So I think we need a white black land. Ugh, Liliana. Liliana isn't exactly what we wanted. Stubborn Denial. <laughs> oh, all the whammies. Well, we're not just dead yet because we still have a chance of drawing a land for Supreme Verdict, but we're going to need to draw it pretty soon. S they're really fighting our signets. That's the, the only conceivable way to leave a um, Spell Snare in the deck is because you want to fight Signets, and Stony Silence only fights Signets. Land, please? No! 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 And this is how it ends. So close. We're so close to stabilizing and winning this game. If we don't draw the land this turn, though, we're dead because we can't we can't sack a fetch to get a land untapped. So it's a land here or bus, I believe. Oh, oh no! Well, that does it. That that does it. Drew our two most expensive planeswalkers instead of a land. Uh, so what did we learn? We learned that a deck that's all Planeswalkers is probably never going to win. Like, I don't know how many... I can't even comprehend the number of matches it would take. You're really dependent on on your opponent mulliganing to three or something crazy like that happening. Because it's just too slow. As we saw in the first matches when we were playing the, the ultimate ultimate planeswalker super friends deck without any signets or anything we just didn't have a chance half of the games we died before our opponent even cast a spell or before we even cast a spell we would just be dead uh in the games where we did cast a spell it was usually like we play a planeswalker on turn four and then die the next turn with our planeswalker doing nothing so all planeswalkers doesn't really work the next version, with the Signets, was much better. At least with the Signets, we were consistently playing Planeswalkers. Still, that version, <laughs> without sideboarding, and literally trying to win with just the Signets and the Planeswalkers, it's definitely better, but it's still rough. Because there's just things we can't deal with. Planeswalkers are really good at dealing with certain things, and I think the Signet version would have a shot against certain decks... But when your opponent goes turn two Primeval Titan, 
or plays a turn two hive mind or a Karn on turn three, the fact that, oh, we played our Johnny Vengeant a turn earlier doesn't really save us. The last version, though, where we actually started sideboarding and bringing in Supreme Verdicts and Thought Seizes and Paths, that actually won us a couple games out of the two matches we played with it. Like, we only played two matches and we won a game in each. I think that's more where you want to be with a, with a Super Friends deck. It still has its problems. It's still slow for Modern. But being able to play multiple Planeswalkers and back that up with Thought Seize to take away an important spell or a Supreme Verdict to clear up the board of like those annoying Lingering Souls tokens or those board full of goblins that we ran into, being able to back it up with spells makes it much better. The other thing, if you're going to build Super Friends in Modern, probably the best way to do it is to select a few Planeswalkers and go in heavy on those. That's the other problem with the deck, since it's Singleton, there is this inherent inconsistency. So, sometimes we really need an Ugin, and we would draw a <laughs> Tezzeret. Sometimes we really needed a Chandra to kill a creature, and we would draw a Elspeth. Sometimes we would, <laughs> you know, draw a Tabal or a Damri Raid, or some Planeswalker that does literal nothing. So I think that the right way to build Super Friends in Modern would be to probably limit the colors to three or four colors. I think you could go five colors if you wanted to, but play multiples of Planeswalkers that actually have a purpose instead of just randomly hoping you draw your one-ofs uh, like a commander deck. So I think if I was going to build, try to build the most competitive version of Super Friends and have flavor not be a concern, I would be looking at playing four copies of Liliana, probably Jace Architect of Thought potentially is a good one, Elspeth obviously is a good one. I think you could build an Esper Super Friends list that has the Thought Seizes, has some counters, still has some Mana Rocks, some Signets, or, and then load up on Liliana the Veil, Jace Architect of Thought, various Elspeths, maybe a Obnixilis as a finisher, and if you think the mana's there and you're going to get up high enough, Karn and Ugin are pretty aw awesome finishers. So I think that's that's the way to go with a competitive deck. So through our failings, I think I learned that too many Planeswalkers isn't good, but I think there is a way to build a good Planeswalker heavy deck. Anyway, despite our failings, <laughs> I had a bunch of fun playing the deck this week. I don't really know exactly how to peg the percentages. But they definitely increase the more spells you add to the deck. All Planeswalkers, lowest percentage. Adding in the Signets, but still not playing any interaction, improves the odds, maybe from like 1% to 5 or 10%. And then adding in some actual interactive spells, the Wraths and stuff, jump that percentage up even higher, maybe to 20-25%. Make sure to check out mtggoldfish.com. That's where you'll find the poll for next week's Against the Odds. That is where you'll find the article and all my other articles. Tons of great content from other people as well. Decks, prices, the metagame strategy, basically anything and everything you could want related to Magic the Gathering. And if you enjoy the video, make sure to click on that subscribe link down at the bottom. It keeps you up to date on all the latest and greatest videos from MTG Goldfish. And it's a huge favor for us if you would subscribe. So anyway, thank you all for watching and I will talk to you soon.